there we go. So this is our title for our sermon today. Um, it's called what? Say it together. Ready? Go. Aha. Uh -huh. So Jesus is cleaning something, cleansing. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, actually, I wanted to say this. Happy New Year! <laughs> it is 2024, right? We actually officially started 2024 already a month ago, right? In January 1st. But lunar calendar, you know, we say 구정, right? We count by looking at the moon. <laughs> and that's why we have 설날 this Saturday, right? Do you guys understand why we have 설날 then? instead of January 1st, right? Good, 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 okay. So our Asian countries like Korea, China, you know, these countries celebrate um, Lunar Calendar New Year, which is this Saturday, right? So um, we, people from long time ago, they were looking at moon and said, oh, this is the first day of the year, right? So we just follow that tradition. Um, so we can say Happy New Year again. But as I was, coming into 2024, the new year, there were a lot of changes, uh, personally and also uh, in my workplace, in your school, right? Um, there were a lot of changes, especially moving. <laughs> um, we, you all experienced moving, but actually you guys just left school at the end of last semester and then just came to the new building when everyone, everything was just settled and clean. But um, actually, I don't have the pictures of, I, I was looking through all my things and I couldn't find any picture of teachers working hard on this, you know, the whole moving project. Um, it was lots and we had so many things that had to be moved, that had to be cleaned, that had to be organized. Uh, it would have been nice if I had a picture, but you all know we were there, right, at Tanyan, and now we move to this place, right? Um, and I'm sure you guys are all excited. I am excited. But the process itself wasn't, it was exciting, but <laughs> wasn't just pleasing because even now we are still going through the process of um, changing and still going through many construction, interior construction and all of that. But still, I'm very thankful that we were able to make this change, right? And, and we get to have this great hall that we can have worship, we can have, you know, PE and all of those wonderful things. Um, and I just found this picture <laughs> of teachers. And, and this was the day when we had a meeting for our winter school prep week. And we are all in this one small room. This is actually JCS3 because we had no heater on that day. <laughs> and it was so cold. And all the teachers, we were trying to find one room that had no windows where it's a little bit warmer than other rooms. And then we were just gathered together and we were like sh shivering. But still, we were very thankful and happy <laughs> to be in the new building. And, and until this day, we were all, all the teachers were work, working very hard. So every time you see the clean building, you say, thank you, teachers <laughs> and staff uh, for working hard for us. And, and that's what happened to our school. And um, I am very, very thankful for this new change that God gave us. Um, not only school, actually, my house also moved. <laughs> I also moved my house. Um, I don't live in the Chutek, but it's an apartment. But still, we also, uh, my family also moved, which include Peter, right? Um, actually, we uh, lived at Tanyamar, which was very close to the school before. And now we get, got to move to closer place to this new campus. <laughs> now we don't walk here, but still it's pretty close. So that was a big change for me. Uh, there were a lot of moving, right? And this isn't my picture, but this is just a picture of some you know, Korean family moving. So we also had to, my family also had to go through all this pojangisa and sadari cha and all of that. And it was nice, nice. People were coming, you know, we pay a lot of money and they come and they help us to move, which was very nice. But still, um, it was my job, you know, my family's job to take care of all the things that we had in the house. Even our school, we had so much trash. You know, when once you move, I'm sure you experience moving, right? And when you look at your things, there are so many things that are just trash. <laughs> that especially I'm the kind of person, you know, may, many ajumas are like that, I guess. But you look at something and you feel like, oh, I'm gonna use this one day, you know? <laughs> you know, you can't just throw it out. Oh, I go, right? So then I just keep those things 
over and over and they are piling over and then when you're moving then you realize oh man I had so much trash in my house and I still have some in my in my house so we still have to go through that this weekend but anyways that was a big thing for my family that I was almost dying <laughs> doing that and uh, but I was actually very happy to actually, this is also not my house, but uh, it's a picture of some family trying to do unpacking and organizing. And you, as you can see in the first picture, this, is, this was my house, you know, all cluttered and so much stuff everywhere. And then I tried to spend the night and I was like cleaning everything, organizing everything, you know, recycle, trash. And then we ended up being, having a clean kitchen, clean room. Um, I couldn't take a picture of my house. It's still in the process. <laughs> but um, that's what happens when you move, right? And it's nice to have that fresh new start, right? Here at our school, um, at, our, at my house. I'm, I'm very, it's, 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 even though it's hard, even though it's a lot of work, but still it's very good to be able to do that, right? To clean up, to throw out whatever you don't need, and to start again, and to organize, and, and it's very nice. So I'm very glad and I'm very thankful that I could do that in the year of 2024, and that I could have this new start, like how Dr. Lee was speaking the, on Monday, right? He was talking about fresh new start, right? So um, even though that's not my title, but still it's in the same context. And then I was thinking, okay, so it's good, you know, my, uh, everything around me is clean and organized, that's wonderful. And then I was thinking, what about my mind? What about my mindset? What about myself? Um, what about inside of me, right? I mean, cleaning up and organizing everything that's around me, wonderful. But what about myself? Am I being cl uh, cleaned up? Am I being organized in my life? So I was um, trying to go back to God's word and there was a, uh, this expression of declutter your mind. So what does declutter mean? Clutter means to have something like all together, right? And then declutter means the opposite of that. And it says to remove mess or clutter from a place or to organize and prioritize one's commitments, material possessions, etc. So I was thinking, that's right. Oh, oops, I didn't show that. Yeah. So. Um, I was thinking, yeah, I got to declutter my mind, and how do I do that? Of course, we have to go back to God's Word, right? The Bible, um, the Word of God. And I ran into Mark 11, 15 to 18, which is actually, you heard about this, right? Jesus cleaning, cleansing the temple. Did you all see the picture of Jesus being angry and like having cord and <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you've seen that before. Um, so actually, this story is in the four Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You can find this story in all those four Gospels. So if you want to look at John's story, uh, you know, all these different writers were writing about this. And the story is same story, but a little bit different. But anyways, I just chose Mark for today. So let's read it together. I'll read one verse, you read the other verse. So I'll start with verse 15. And they came to Jerusalem, and he entered the temple and began to drive out those who sold and those who bought in the temple. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold pigeons. Okay, now you go, ready, you go. And he would not allow anyone to carry anything through the temple. And he was teaching them and saying to them, Is it not written, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all the nations? But you have made it a den of robbers. Um, oops, sorry. Keep on forgetting I'm turning this one and then I'm not. Okay, 18, ready, go. And the chief priests and the scribes heard it and were seeking a way to destroy him. For they feared him because all the crowd was astonished at his teaching. Okay, so what was happening in Jerusalem. Why were Jesus and his disciples going to Jerusalem? And this always, if you uh, go into the week of, um, uh, what is it? Uh, I forgot the word all of a sudden. Passion week, right? Uh, right before Easter. We start the uh, week out with um, the week where, uh, the Sunday where it's Palm Sunday, you know, it starts uh, out with Jesus riding on a donkey and going into Jerusalem, and then this story comes out, right? Jesus goes to the temple, and there were a lot of Israelites. Why? Because they were celebrating something called Passover, and the first Passover was 
this in Exodus. If you know the story of Exodus, when Moses was living, right, uh, people of Israelite, uh, Israel, Israel, Israelites, Jews we also call them, were all living in Egypt and they were in slavery, right? And God said, you should come out of that country and then you have to worship me only. And Moses was, was sent, right, with Aaron to talk to King, of Pharaoh, uh, King Pharaoh and then they said, let my people go. Do you know that story? Yeah, and then King Pharaoh said, "Yo, go." Did he say that? No, of course not. He was like, "No." But at first, he's like, "Oh, okay." But then later on, he'll change his mind, right? Many, many times. And then God was giving plagues to Egypt, but still he would not listen. And then this was the last plague, right? And God said, "I will send the angel, and this angel of death will go over your houses, and then will kill the firstborn. But if you put the blood of the animal." Uh, clean animal, clean uh, sheep, then you will be okay. Then angel of the Lord will pass over. So that's why it's called Passover, right? So angel of the Lord passed over all of the houses of Israelites who put the blood on their do doorposts. And then they were saved, right? And that day when King Pharaoh's firstborn son was dead, then he realized, oh no, I cannot play with this God of Israelites, right? So then he said, you go! And then that's when Israelites were freed, right? So this was the first Passover. Now, from then on, God said, you should celebrate and remember this Passover. So then from then on, Jewish, uh, Jews, Israelites, were going back to Jerusalem, to the temple of God, where they worship God, right? To uh, worship him. Right? And to remember this wonderful time that God saved their uh, country, God saved their nation, right, to the people. So then when they come to worship back then, before Jesus came, they had to bring offering, offering of uh, animals, right? Um, and then that's why they have all these animals. But when they came, not everybody coming from different places could bring animal. And they used different coins, different money system. So then, this is a different kind of picture. I chose this picture because you all seen this kind of picture of Jesus. So I kind of found this picture where you can kind of see the temple is big and there are so many people with so many uh, coins around. These people were all like selling and changing money for the people who came to uh, buy pigeons and all these animals that they want to give as offering. And the temple of God was becoming this place of like market. Right? You go to Shijang, right? Chere Shijang, you see a lot of people selling things. It, it was looking kind of like that. And Jesus, filled with anger and yearning for worship and um, for the temple of God to be the place of prayer, right? House of prayer, house of worship. He was just, it was not okay. And it was time for him to actually show his authority. So then he said, no, this is not okay. And you all know the story of Jesus, how he's very humble, how he's meek, and he's kind. But this time he was different because it was his time, right? And soon he's going to die on the cross for all of our sins, right? So then he was getting ready. And he said, no, this is not what you do in the temple of God. Right? So he was cleansing the temple. And this is the famous story that you all heard from maybe your church, maybe school. Um, and that's how Jesus was. He was cleansing the temple. And then I go back to declaring my mind and our mind. And when Jesus says that, it's not only talking about church, right? When we say temple, we just think about church, building. Uh, at church, that's right, we shouldn't sell and we shouldn't do those things. But then it's talking about not only that, but ourselves. So I want to kind of skip to this one. I will go back to that. And God says actually in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 19, that we are the temple of God. Our body is the temple of God. And he says, you should be cleansed, right? If you have so much in your mind, so much going on, of course, we do. We do have many things. We had to study. We had to do homework. We had to do, you know, cook for her life for some moms. <laughs> we have so many things going on, right? But Jesus says, you should cleanse your mind. You should come back to me. You should remember to be. The, yes, true worshipers. Are you really treating yourself to be the house of God? Are you really having your mind set for me? Are you putting me first? Or not just first, second, third, but are you really thinking that I'm your everything? 
Are you so busy with everything else that you're forgetting that you are my temple, that you are the one that you should, that should worship me? So that is the message that I wanted to go back to. And for not only myself, but for all of you. So as we start this new year again, we want to go back to the basic, right? Am I a true worshiper? Am I really coming back to God and saying, I'm your temple. Jesus, you really want me to be clean with you, putting you as my savior, putting you as my one that I should worship and that I should love, right? So this is the song that we sing, right? And, and it's the lyric from that. This is my desire to honor you. This uh, Lord, with all my heart, heart, I worship you. And I hope this becomes our confession to our Lord as we enter into this new year and new semester. And I pray that all of you will be declaring your mind to come before Jesus as he cleanses you, right, to become his temple, to worship him. Okay, so let's pray.